Welcome to this week's episode of Painology. We're going to be talking about overcoming the financial challenges of chronic pain with some very specific examples of ways that you can save money, ways that I found that have saved us tens of thousands of dollars over the years. I've had over a million dollars in medical bills and um, we're debt free. So how do you find the way to do that and get the care that you need? That's what we're going to be talking about today. We want you guys to share the broadcast and really um, ask questions, get involved. We can see your comments when you make them. So go ahead and kick those in. And then um, also next week, we'll be back to talk about tips and tools for overcoming your daily challenges of living with chronic pain physically. So today's financial next week is physically. And so um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to like, well, I'll just go over some of the keys uh, to medical billing. Perfect. Okay. So um, every time you see a medical provider and charges uh, are run through your insurance or, or Medicare, you will receive a statement from the insurance company as well as the doctor's office. Okay. Right. This so, is known so as. Get, it's known. It's hard to say. Explanation of benefits. Why is that so hard to say? I don't EOB. Know. EOB. EOB. EOB is what everybody needs to be familiar with. EOB. EOB. Explanation Everything comes down to of that. benefits. Here in America. Everything right. comes down to your EOB. So when, when you get your doctor bill, a lot of times the doctors will send you a bill like immediately after services and they don't wait for your insurance company to say what is negotiated price, what is going to be covered, what's the patient responsibility. Don't pay your doctor bill till you get your EOB unless you don't have insurance and then you have to negotiate your cash price, which we'll talk about also. EOB. That's, That's what right. you need to know. EOB. Yes. Um, and then um, learning how to spot errors and overcharges will save you time and money mm -hmm. uh, a great deal, a great deal. Uh, paying attention and catching the errors can radically cut your bill. The insurance logs are not always correct. And for that matter, doctor offices uh, make billing mistakes as well. Mm -hmm. And billing codes are always changing. Um, chances of finding an error are high. Yes. Medical Billing Advocates of America. And the and Jayco. And Jayco. Um, estimates that eight of 10 medical bills have errors. Ah, eight out of 10 have an error. That's what? huge. What do you eight know? out of 10, eight, eight out, out of 10, 10 is just enormous. That's yeah. Just, that's really big. Right. Eight out of 10. Think so, about how many people that, 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 um, covers, how many uh, uh, bills are there? EOBs are there? I don't know. There? I've I mean, had a million dollars in medical, over a million dollars in medical bills. That's yeah, a the, lot of EOBs. That's a lot of EOBs. <laughs> That is a lot, that of is a lot of EOBs. Have you ever looked at an EOB and said, hey, I didn't even get Tylenol when I was in, but they're exactly. charging me 80 bucks for it. Exactly. So this doctor never even came in my room. I brought my medicine from home. <laughs> yeah, so right. So let's show them what an EOB looks like. Okay. And I'll tell you guys some of the things to look for on your EOBs. So, so this is what an EOB yeah, looks like. Put it up close, a little closer, maybe. You I'm trying to it. get the whole thing in. Okay. So on here, what you're looking for, if any of these things are incorrect, then your charges are not going to go through correctly. Your negotiations that they make with your doctor's offices are not going to go through correctly. So you have to check all these things, the provider name, the date of service, the, um, the uh, procedure description to make sure you're being charged what you were uh, given at the doctor's office. Um, the amount of denial, you can hold that up again. Amount of denial, the explanation codes, the amount allowed and negotiated by insurance, the amount applied to the deductible, the co-pays, the co-insurance. You're blowing on so it. Many, sorry, so many things are, are important. Um, uh, also, if you have secondary insurance, make sure they charge your primary insurance first and then your secondary insurance, because if they charge them backwards, then it's going to show that you owe a lot more than you owe. And mm -mm -mm -mm, I've caught them in that mistake before, well, too. In our case, our case, my my um, my primary job is the, the primary <laughs> my primary job. My job is a primary insurance. Right. And she has a secondary insurance. Right. Known as Medicare. And whatever my primary insurance covers, the Medicare will pick up the rest. No matter what. Okay. So if you switch that around and, um, or don't catch that it has been switched around and Medicare says no, well, guess what? It's not covered. Yeah. So pay, definitely pay attention to that. Make sure that it's, uh, you know, getting a look at properly. properly and um, 
prioritize. And if you have Medicare as your primary insurance and you can afford to get a secondary, it could be really beneficial for you to get a secondary insurance. It, it has cut our, medi- our well, bills. What happens and the reason bills, why, yeah, the reason why is great. because um, my insurance has a deductible, mm-hmm. okay? And the deductible is um, pretty hefty. Right. Um, as we all know, everybody knows that deductible. Dang, that did, it's, it's almost like catastrophic insurance these days. However, um, that deductible gets covered by the secondary insurance. Right. So, uh, you know, that, that really, and then, you know, by out of, you know, by the end of the, now this is, this covers one person in the family, right? For our case, like right. I would have my own deductible, but right. and I that- very rarely meet um, you know, I'm pretty healthy, so I don't really meet um, a whole lot of, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> so, but in her case, um, it's to have that help covering the deductible. We, we meet the deductible every single year, and it's usually in the first quarter of the year. Right. So that's hefty, and that would really hurt our wallet because I don't make it. I'm sorry. I know y'all think I'm rich. <laughs> You're not what? I know I look rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah not happening no so that would that would um and even rich people we went through this last last week even rich people would have a, a hard hard time affording health care without um uh insurance. insurance yeah so keep, it, keep that in mind so and also check what is the patient responsibility there's so many times my doctor bill says i owe two thousand dollars or whatever it says and my patient responsibility for all my eob is like you owe twenty six dollars your portion, patient responsibility, is $26. So don't go trying to pay the $2,000. Pay what your insurance negotiated for you. Don't pay any more than that. So those are things to look for on your EOB. Now, on your doctor bill, show them what a doctor bill looks like. I'm sure if you're well, watching this episode, you know what a doctor bill looks like. But let but me show just you. Just in case you don't know, that is what a doctor bill looks like. And on this, you have to check and make sure that your account number is right, your admission date, your discharge date your insurance company information, your policy number, your data service, the quality of care, the service codes, description of service, total charges, total bill to insurance primary one and primary two, or not primary two, but secondary insurance, Um, your patient responsibility, your summary of charges. All of this needs to be checked every single time a bill comes. Does it take a lot of energy pennies? Did we talk about that last week? Yes, it does take a lot of energy pennies. It's a yeah, full-time once you job get, being sick. But, but once you get familiar with what a doctor bill looks like, um, you can really scan through it and pick out those errors and pick out the things that, that stand out or that need to is be your, looked at. Yeah, if your name is misspelled, your doctor bill and your explanation of benefits will not be correct because it runs through the insurance system. And if it has a name off, if it has a number off in your social security number or your account number, it will not give you the proper reimbursement or negotiated price for your policy. You have to make sure that these things are correct. It's amazing how much they have to line up. If they don't line up whatsoever, it's just not going to fit in the hole. Exactly. Yeah. It's um, like putting a triangle in a split circle. It just doesn't work. Most people use square in that scenario. I couldn't think of that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you okay. know what we mean right uh-huh. i'm sure they do okay um so um the <laughs> insurance does not uh guarantee that you will be covered for services you need well i think right. everybody knows that right. um you check your policies for over and under coverage and for what you are able to cover with your mm-hmm. insurance uh, spending some time to look over your policy in advance can save you time and money in the long run Right. Okay. And here are yep. some, tips. some tips. Do you want to so, say anything about that? Yeah. So don't, some of the tips are don't um, buy disease specific coverage. Um, a, a lot of people waste f- funds just buying disease specific coverage. And yeah, it's right. available. And what about duplicating coverage? Yeah. You don't want to duplicate your coverage either. If, if you have coverage for breast cancer, then buying a secondary policy is not going to um, well, it's, it's help as, you too much for that type of situation. So right. um, some of the other things, we'll get to questions in just a minute. Some of the other things, that, uh, tips that are really good <clears throat> is get pre-approval for services. My insurance, my primary insurance doesn't require like pre-approval. For uh, surgeries and for any Yes, for surgeries or procedures or any durable medical equipment, getting a prior authorization can help uh, lower your costs as well. Be even like our insurance, my primary doesn't require a prior authorization. So I can just go and get any procedure that a doctor orders. 
and it's supposed to be covered. But I've learned that if I get a prior authorization, they, they cover it better. Now, can you negotiate if you're paying, if you don't have insurance, you're paying cash, can you negotiate? You can absolutely negotiate. If you are a cash paying patient, you don't have insurance or you need a procedure that's not covered by your insurance, you can negotiate. And one of the best ways that, that we have found um, in the last like four months, I guess. And I guess that, that would be really, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Is, one is, of the best ways? Yeah, is, is Amino. Amino, I, yes. yes. Hey, dot com. <laughs> Amino.com. Amino. Com. It's great. great. It, it will, um, if you go on there and, and type in your uh, zip code, I think, mm -hmm. um, and then, or, and then your, your, the procedure that you're looking for or wanting to have done, um, it will give you a list um, of, of how much people are paying for that in, not only in your zip code, but nearby zip codes. Right. So you, so can you may be able to travel or may be wise to travel to another zip code in order to save. And I'm talking in hundreds and hundreds, you know, these medical procedures are, well, why is that 10 grand? Well, if you didn't look, or if you would have looked, um, you could have found it for half that five grand or and then you grand. can negotiate um, a, a cash price if you don't have insurance right. you know so, so simple things like that amino.com is really really helpful for great not only providers but procedures yeah so yes um, um, negotiating with hospitals as well you can do the same thing um you can do the same thing with negotiating for providers uh at the hospitals you can say you know i i want to get a app not an appendectomy but uh that would be kind of like an emergency situation it's harder to negotiate when you're in an emergency situation but if you know it's a procedure coming up you can negotiate what is going on um it's also um only use providers that accept your medical plan try to find providers that are able to do what you need done in your medical plan. And if you can't, then you go to your medical insurer and you say, I need this procedure or this durable medical equipment, whatever it is, this medication, and it is not offered in the, in the formulary. It's not offered in your list of, of approved procedures, or sorry, it's offered in the approved procedures, but no doctors in our network do this procedure. Will you cover an out of network doctor in network because there's not a currently a doctor in the network that does this procedure for my condition. And, and a lot of times they will say yes and override that. In, or in sometimes that. a doctor is um, at more than one hospital. What's that called for? He's a, uh, um, at this hospital, he's, he's a, um, he's a hospitalist and internist. Uh, um, Hummel goes to uh, Scottsdale. He's affiliated he's with. Affiliate. He's yeah. affiliated. So uh, doctors, thank you, affiliates. Um, <laughs> Some doctors are affiliated with more than one hospital. Um, so therefore a doctor may be able to travel as well. Right. So, I mean, but then again, you know, the, if not, then, you know, some negotiating power comes into play as well. So learn how to negotiate, spot the, um, you know, what it is that you need. Um, yes. And then um, uh, pay your premiums on time. If you miss a premium, your insurance is off. So if you go to get, a doctor appointment or a procedure or a durable medical appointment yeah, during that time. Gap. Yeah, that's a gap in insurance. It is a very bad a thing. a gap in your insurance. Don't do that. Okay. Um, and um, I, I, if you're not familiar with this or haven't you know, got a lot of experience with medical insurance, think of your car, your car insurance. Mm -hmm. If you miss a payment, you're not covered. Okay. Yes. And you know, you know that when that, that date comes up, you're like, oh God, I better not wreck. I hope nothing happens. You yeah. get very conscious about that. You should be the same way or even more of health insurance, even though you don't need it at the time. You never know when something, it's a bankruptcy. If anything catastrophic happens, it's just instant bankruptcy. Right. So definitely so, pay then, your premiums on time. Mm -hmm. And they're getting tougher and tougher to afford, I know. However, um, you can't, you just can't go without it. Um, right. it, could, it could wreck you financially. Yeah. And then my last tip would be seek financial resources. Um, they have like uh, care credit. And oh. uh, programs like that at banks that you can get a medical uh, loan. And so if you can negotiate a cash price that your insurance isn't going to cover, um, but you need this procedure or you want this relief. procedure, code pay relief fund is a really good one. If you are a chronic pain patient or disease specific patient, you can go on copay relief fund. And um, for, for chronic pain patients, they give you about $1,500 a year to help pay your copays. Um, for for uh, medication and medication procedures like infusion therapy, and um, that that is one that I've used a lot over the years. So definitely 
make sure that you're getting, it's a grant. You don't have to pay that back, copiarelieffund.org. And um, so some people want to know, how do you negotiate with your, okay. you know, health Well, do you bills? want to answer some of the other questions first or? Uh, sure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So um, pr uh, ask for pre-approval for alternative therapies like acupuncture. Definitely, that is very important to ask for those pre-approvals. Um, what do we think of supplements like Aflac? Aflac can be beneficial. I found that most of the time, if you're already a chronic care patient, then Aflac is not very beneficial for you. But if you are a full-time working person that is healthy and you have Aflac, it, it can be beneficial and you probably can afford it a little bit better. But if you're already disabled in any way and you get Aflac, I have a friend who actually worked for Aflac part time, and um, and they ended up applying for their their benefits from Aflac uh, when they became full disabled. They were partially disabled, and they became fully disabled, and they were not able to get any of the medicine or or, or the uh, the refunds from Aflac that they had paid into. So they had paid all that money, and because they weren't healthy when they got it, they didn't actually get the benefit. Um, so make sure you check on that. Uh, you can find more resources on our website, which is internationalpain.org, internationalpain.org. Um, uh, communicate what you want and need to, to, um, to get it. Ask before it seems like they will cover procedure or treatment. Um, right. Sometimes, and also, and this is coming up in negotiating your bills, when, when you can record your conversations um, in California and New York, I know you have to disclose that you're recording in other states like Arizona, well, you and, don't. And, but you got to be cautious with that because um, there's not a doctor alive that wants to be trapped into or feel like they're being trapped into something. Um, so it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are by yourself and you have nobody else with you and you're experiencing extreme pain, what's the chances of you remembering everything that the doctor is telling you and that you need to follow up on and do? Yeah. So it's very, if you're going to do this, say, doctor, um, my, I'm going through a lot of pain. My memory is not going to be with me. Do you mind if I just hit record? Same thing with insurance companies. And chances are they're, they're, they're not going to be, they might be cautious. I mean, it's like it, it switches this, uh, it switches something in their brain. Plus, they might improve their bedside manner. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If they know they're exactly. being recorded, it's like, hmm, okay. But they may say, no, I don't want this recorded. And then say, okay, well, can I record some of the important parts at the end or something? When you use we do a recap at the end. Yeah, right. it's something, yeah, recap at the end. Um, right, and, and, but and for, for that, insurance now, If you have a really good relationship with your doctor, then you're, you keep backing out of the Sorry. camera when you're looking. Um, <laughs> well, if you have a really good relationship with your doctor, then, um, you know, they, they probably won't mind at all. They don't, they, they understand that you're not trying to trap them into any type of, uh, you know, lawsuit malpractice or anything like that. Right. But when it comes to financial, you got to negotiate with your insurance company to get something covered. It's a really good idea. I, from, from 2003 to 2009, I've recorded every single phone conversation just because I couldn't remember too well. Um, so I needed to, to have that documentation. And Kim would come home well, from work and say, who'd you talk to? And I was like, I have no idea. Comes um, in very <laughs> handy. Well, I'm with her on most of the uh, uh, doctor, doctor appointments anyway. Right. But, um, and that, that's helpful to have somebody with you when you're at the doctor so that you can yes. help, um, you know, hey, did you remember to do this? Right, right, you right. Know. Okay. Of course, my memory, I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So some tips on negotiating your medical bills. This is... Uh, really, again, something that saved us tens of thousands of dollars. You can ask for cheaper alternatives. Yes, you can, and you can um, pay ahead of time, um, cash if possible. Well, because they can, you can be like, I got my cash in hand right now. I want well, to pay for this. Also, um, HSA. You yes, know, that, that's HSAs. If you, you have connection cash. to a, a so HSA, can, which is health savings um, account, pay ahead of time, cash if possible. So there usually is a discount for pay cash payers. Right. Exactly. Always. I don't. I, I don't know. I. We not assume, always. We not assume, always. All means all, and that's all all means. Right. Well, but we, most of the we time, assume that people know these things, but um, I didn't just know remember, it until, until I learned the cash, hard way. Just ask: Is there a cash discount? It's easy to ask. Okay. Uh, use Shop the doctor around. as your advocate. Don't be afraid to yeah. ask for a reduction in your bill. Right. Shop around. Amino. 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 I'm it's the you, best amino. resource com. that I found. Um, and yeah. You can you can yeah. find that on our website again. Um, you Google eye pain and you can find our website or YouTube we, or social links. Yeah, we used to have to tell patients um, 
call the doctors in your area that you are thinking about seeing and ask them what their prices are. And some don't want to give it out. What Amino did was they took EOBs from practically every doctor in the United States. You don't have to pay to be a resource on their site or anything like that. It's all truly what it is. And it's a great, it's a great uh -huh. find. You, you want to book. And, it. and they take the information based off of the EOBs as to what doctors are charging, what diagnosis. Here's codes a great are, question. All of that. Yeah. Go. That's a great question. Yeah. Have you noticed that doctors sometimes order unnecessary tests while you are in their office? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm like, why do I need to do that? Absolutely. Test? What, what is this for? Like, well, but then also we've, we've actually even had a doctor um, say, okay, everything's fine here. It's like, well, can I get, um, uh, can I get my, uh, my EOB results? or my, my results? Can you, I need my bill or not, not my, my bill, bill, but my, my results. My results. Mm -hmm. And then they come back like 45 minutes later and give you a list of things that, that could they possibly be wrong, with. but they just told you everything's fine here. Nothing to see. <laughs> yeah, that was, so that was, a that experience. is another way of holding uh, a doctor accountable. Um, but do they order things? Um, to be done. Uh, yeah, all the time. But you know, it, you may want some of these, a lot of these are preventative. And you got to keep in mind that doctors do this, um, not just to jack the price of things, but to cover their own butt. Right. A, I didn't say <laughs> CYO, CYAB. Cover your, your your butt. Butt. Okay, so but they do this because the malpractice insurance or uh, lawsuits and that, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't hold it out on the doctor if he thinks that something you know should be done. He's trying to do it so that he ask can ask why. Ask why though, yeah. Mm -hmm. as, as it just makes sense to ask why. So yes. um, uh, before you go into care, compare prices for the treatment from multiple doctors in your area. Again, that's Amino, a great resource, and I think you'll like it once you uh, look at it. And and it's really easy to navigate. It's not it's not complicated, so that's nice too. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, be sure to check all avenues available for your procedure. Also remember, if you have insurance, check to see if the doctor you're using and the facilities are both covered by your insurance. Absolutely. If, if, you're, um, if, if what they're asking you to do is not covered by insurance, it's really important that you negotiate and create a plan ahead of time to, to continue with that doctor or procedure or location all of that needs to be uh, negotiated ahead of time. Again, I know it's we're chronic pain patients. <laughs> it's hard. Okay, so um, thank Keep you. Keep in mind, uh, what's, what's next week's topic? Next week's topic is hopefully some of these things benefited you. Next week, this was about financial. Next week will be about the physical things, tips and tools that you can use in your everyday life to make your daily living better. Oh, we got some good ones. Yes, Be absolutely. sure and come back and check. And um, we have fun uh, like thinking of new ones all the time. So we'd be happy to share with, with you what we have found and don't be afraid to let us know some of the things that you've got. So time flies by so fast. It does so much. I hope some of this was helpful for you and keep, keep some of these things in mind. Keep saving and, money. Um, you can always visit our website for um, other tips and tricks. And uh, on these topics, uh, you can uh, internationalpain.org. Right. And, and you can also check out the pain code by Barbie Engel. Oh, and she just released a book. So <laughs> I, well, yeah, from, from wheels, wheels to, heels. to heels. But the pain code talks all about this medical billing issue and how to get around it. So if you want more in-depth information, you can always get that book as well. So thank you guys. Great job. Blessings and peace to all of you. We will see you next week. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks for watching Painology.